In this video, I'll be showing you a terminal block breakout board for the Teensy 4.1 and explaining why it's a better choice for reliable, long-term wiring compared to a breadboard setup. I'll also show you how I made a custom 7-pin 22-gauge wire connector for each of my TFT displays. And this will help keep your wiring clean, secure, and easy to maintain. Here's my current breadboard setup with the Teensy 4.1. It works, but as you can see, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a mess, or a whole lot of a mess, actually. And over time, the breadboard has become a little bit sloppy. It, the connections aren't as good as they used to be, so we'll get flickering with the eyes sometimes. I did try adding capacitors to stabilize the power and reduce the flicker, and for the most part, that worked pretty well. Another issue I had was trying to see the tiny pin numbers that are printed on top of the board. And when you add all the wires around it, it makes it really difficult to see. So here's the breakout board itself, and immediately you can tell that it's really well made. Everything feels solid and precise. I bought this off Amazon, so I don't really know who made it, but they did use a high quality fireproof nylon, and not that cheap plastic stuff that you sometimes see. As you can see, each of the pins of the Teensy is broken out into its own screw terminal, and that lets you firmly connect your wires without worrying about loose jumpers or flaky breadboard contacts. You mount the Teensy board right on top here using these headers. It's pretty secure, but uh, I'm really excited about the easy access to the pins. It's great for long-term or even semi-permanent builds. I should also mention the 112 DIY solder pads here. It's got the standard 2.5 millimeter pitch so that you can add resistors, capacitors, or any other small electronics directly to the board. It's kind of like having your own mini prototyping build area. Overall, it feels pretty rugged and durable. That doesn't mean I'm going to be rough with it, but it does mean I'll be pretty excited about including it in future projects. And my next step is going to be to add this breakout board with the eyes attached into that guy right there. It'll be a lot of fun. Now I want to go ahead and unscrew the sides here and show you what it looks like underneath the PCB board. So I've unscrewed both sides, and I do like the fact that it screws together. It gives it that professional industrial feel. So the grooves on the sides of the board fit perfectly so it doesn't flex or rattle. It's a simple design, but it really does make a big difference in how solid the whole thing feels. After taking it apart, I think we found out why it feels so durable. You can see the base has raised edges and molded supports to help keep its rigidity, and it gives it that stiffness. Now the soldering on the bottom of this is excellent. It's got clean joints, solid connections, and nice copper traces on both sides of the board. It's an FR-4 fiberglass PCB, so it should be sturdy and at least fire resistant. I'm going to go ahead and slide this PCB back into the base, screw it together, and then show you what I did to improve the wiring for my displays. I almost forgot, this also came with two sets of headers here and then two mounting screws as well. I have this pin connector kit that includes male and female pin headers and then the uh, pin header housings. So I'm going to create a seven pin header connector for my displays using seven female connectors, pin connectors, and the appropriate housing. I'm going to use 22 gauge solid wire for my display wiring. You can use strand, but uh, solid wire is what I've got. I'm going to break off a female connector, or seven female connectors from this uh, strand of pin connectors I've got here. Now I'm going to strip the very tip, the very tippy top here of my 22 gauge wire. You don't want to cut off too much, and you don't want to cut off too little. That's why uh, if you haven't done this, it's going to take a couple times practicing to get it right. This is my crimper tool that I use for this, and it is a Molex, M-O-L-E-X. Here is the female pin connector we'll be using, and the trick here is to line up the first pair of crimp wings so that it grabs onto the insulation, not the metal, and that gives it some strain relief and keeps the wire from bending or breaking over time. Then there's the second pair of wings, the ones closer to the tip. That should wrap around your bare copper, and that's what's going to make your electrical connection, so that part is important. So we got it seated in there. We want to slide the copper wire right to that part right there, not past those wings, because you have a male connector that needs to fit in there. Then we're going to crimp it, and then I like to go down the size and crimp it there, and then go down to the smallest and crimp it there too. I find that when I crimp the wings real tight, I hear that click when I slide it into the housing, and it fits perfect. So your crimp should look something like this, your connector, with the wings right there. The first set of wings grabbing the insulation, the second grabbing the copper wire. You don't want anything past that. 
After we've crimped all of our wires, we're going to get our 7-pin housing here, and we're going to slide each wire into the housing. Ideally, we should hear a click. There should be no give, uh, no, no sliding around, and it should be a firm connection. You've heard that click. That's a good connection. It doesn't come out at all. It doesn't slide around. And we're going to do the other six wires for this housing, and then we're going to do seven wires for the other housing. That way we have two connectors for both of our displays. Now I'm going to connect the 7-pin connector to the back of the TFT display. I always use red for VCC and black for ground, so I want to make sure those are matched up to the pins on the back of the display. It may be kind of hard to push it in, so I'm going to take something hard and press against those uh, soldered contacts. You don't want to press against the screen or the display. You will crack it. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other display. Once I've got the wire connections connected to my displays, I should probably mount the Teensy board to the top of the breakout board before I screw too many wires into the terminals, just so they don't get in the way. Now I'm going to connect the TFT display wires to the appropriate terminal. Here's a diagram for you for the right eye, and here's a diagram for you for the left eye. Once you've got all the display wires screwed into the terminals and you upload your code, your eyes should look something like this. The wiring looks much cleaner. The stiffness of the 22 gauge wire allows me to kind of bend it to whatever direction I need it to bend in, and it still keeps a good connection. Overall, it's just easier to manage. The connections are pretty solid, as you can see. No flickering of the eyes. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. That's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, be sure to like the video by clicking the thumbs up. Also subscribe if you enjoy this type of stuff and share it with somebody else who may find it useful. I'll see you again with another video.